Hello and welcome to uh, walk number 11. <clears throat> You'll notice my hat, my scarf. We're now getting into a uh, cold part of the year. Uh, so uh, uh, everything else that we'll see, I think, for the rest of the year uh, is going to be a nice evergreen uh, plant. So today we're going to start with number 114. This is Ilex crinata, Japanese holly. So uh, lots of folks think about Japanese holly as being these little tiny minuscule plants. We picked this one to show you today because uh, this is a, a, a nice size plant. It is uh, probably upwards of uh, 12, 13 feet tall. So they get quite large. So when you go by a uh, standard species type Japanese uh, holly, uh, be prepared that it's going to get large. It does tolerate pruning um, not uh, quite as well perhaps as a, a Japanese or as a uh, common boxwood, but it does tolerate some pruning. Um, the leaves are alternately arranged in all of our hollies, so that's one easy way to tell it apart from your uh, boxwood. It also has crenate margins, as the uh, name suggests. And finally, uh, underneath, there are these sort of translucent um, little uh, glands. They're like uh, translucent or little uh, black dots. So uh, those are uh, dead giveaway, and they don't have the uh, creamy midribs that you see in um, uh, boxwood. And uh, last, so we, we typically think of our hollies as having those nice bright uh, red fruit that are quite large, but in our Japanese hollies and Ilex crinata and, and some other species similar, uh, they actually have black fruit. And don't forget that hollies are dioecious. This happens to be a female plant that I'm standing in front of. It has small uh, black fruit, um, but it does require a pollinizer. Okay, so that is uh, Ilex crinata, your Japanese holly.